Okay. Diego Navarrete says, why does it say an angel in Acts 7 appeared and not uh, the angel? Well, uh, I did have Shabir Ali try to bring this up in his debate with me, uh, and I actually did say something about it. Uh, if you recall, just prior to that, Shabir had said that Dan Wallace um, says that John 1.1 1, 1 doesn't teach that Jesus is God, right? And then I quoted Dan Wallace saying the exact opposite. So Shabir doesn't know Greek grammar. Shabir did not accurately represent Dan Wallace. But since I had just mentioned Wallace, and then Shabir brought up this claim that the New Testament refers to the angel as an angel, I pointed out that according to Dan Wallace, the phrase angeluth kuriu or angelos kuriu in uh, Acts 7 is actually to be understood as a definite uh, uh, construction. And so what a lot of people don't know is they assume that if something is definite in Greek, then it has the definite article, right? So if it's an arthurus, meaning it doesn't have the definite article, then it's to be understood in an indefinite sense. But that's just not true. Being an arthur, so for in the first place, Greek does not have an indefinite article. Okay, so uh, it's not the case that if something doesn't have the article, then it's automatically indefinite. There's more than one way for something to be definite. There's at least ten different ways that something in Greek can be definite. Right, uh, not simply through having the article. One way is when the term is monadic. Okay, when the term is monadic, and I'll give you an example of that. Um, if uh, uh, in some cases the New Testament will will make reference to the Father, God the Father, right? Sometimes it doesn't use the article, but. Everybody knows when they're looking at this that it's monadic, meaning it's re there's only one who uh, uh, there's only one father, one heavenly father, and so the phrase is is understood in a definite sense: the father, not a father, right? It's not God a father or something like that. Similarly, it sometimes uses the word son without the article, right? When it says that God causes uh, the sun to rise or or, or uh, shine on the just and the unjust uh if it uses sun there without the article and i actually don't recall if it does or not but there are places where it, it uses the sun uh right let me i'm looking it up real quick i just want to see if it uses the article or not so it's matthew 5 45 so i just want to look at the greek text okay so here it actually does use the article. I'm going to look for an occasion where it doesn't use the article real quick. Okay, so here's an example. In Matthew 13, uh, 6, it says, Heliude uh, anatelantos, which means uh, the sun having now risen, right? In this case, it doesn't use the article. But every single translation will say, the sun having now risen, because sun is monadic. There's only one sun, right? One sun in our solar system, or uh, yeah, in our solar system, uh, one sun in the sense uh, that's relevant to the earth. And so even though it doesn't have the article, it's still definite. Uh, there are a whole host of words like this all throughout the New Testament that are being used in a monadic sense. I'll give you another example of a word that's uh, an arthurus. If you look at uh, Mark 1.1, 1, 1, uh, the first verse of Mark's gospel says, Archi tu euangeliu, Jesu, uh, Jesu Christu huiu theu. Right? That means the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Well, here you actually have more than one word that doesn't have the article. Archi, which means uh, beginning, has no article. But it, uh, it means in, uh, or excuse me, it means the beginning, uh, not a beginning. Right? It's referring to the beginning of the gospel. There's only one beginning to the gospel, right? Uh, and so, uh, uh, in fact, there's more than one reason to understand that is definite there because it's not only uh, monadic, it's it's a monadic use, uh, 
uh, but it's also at the start of the book. Uh, and so uh, scholars recognize when you have something like this at the start of a book, it's usually being understood in a definite sense. But it also says, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, huiu theu, son of God. It's an arthurus. It doesn't have the article. It doesn't mean a son of God. It means the son of God. In fact, in verse 11, uh, Jesus is re referred to as the agapetos huios, the beloved son. So he's being distinguished as God's unique son. So there, there's only one of those, right? In, in Mark 12, 6, uh, Jesus contrasts himself with all the prophets that came before him, saying that God, last of all, after sending his servants, the prophets, said he has one more to send, his beloved son, the son, right? Uh, and, and there, most scholars would say, agapetos has the sense of one and only, just like the Greek word monogenes, one and only son. So, Something can be definite without having the definite article in Greek. And I've only given you a couple of examples or a couple of those other reasons why it can be definite. So when you come to the angel of the Lord in Acts chapter 7 and you ask, who's this being talked about? No, nobody questions who this is referring to. It's referring to the angel of the Lord in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, the Hebrew construction, there's no question, it's definite. It's always definite, right? Uh, it says, Melach Yahweh. Whenever you have two nouns, in this case, Melach and uh, Yehovah, right, if, if you want to be technical, uh, but Melach and Jehovah are both nouns, and it's a, it's what's called a noun construction. Uh, and whenever you have two nouns, uh, if the uh, if you have a noun sentence, in other words, the, if the second noun is a proper name, then the entire phrase is definite. So, for example, uh, if you have uh, the phrase feast of the Lord, it's usually feast and Lord, and it's called the feast of the Lord because Lord is definite, rendering the entire noun phrase definite. So there's no question about that. Every single Hebrew grammarian will tell you the phrase is definite. There's there's uh, absolutely no question that the phrase is definite. It always refers to the angel of the Lord, the specific uh, figure uh, who's always mentioned by that title. So when we come to the New Testament and Stephen in Acts chapter 7 is talking about the angel of the Lord, uh, even though it's an arthurus in Greek, it doesn't mean it's necessarily... Uh, indefinite, right? And we know here who he's talking about, so it's obviously a monadic use of uh, the article. You could even, I mean, of the of the of the phrase, uh, you could even say it's anaphoric, right? Anaphoric is another way you can determine something is definite. It's referring back to uh, the Old Testament, where it's referring to a specific individual. So, hopefully, that's helpful. I know that. It might have been a little bit more grammatical than some people would have wished, but uh, uh, you can always refer back to this. I also have, by the way, an article on answeringislam.org. If you go there and you look for my series, it's called uh, Melach Yahweh, Jesus, the Divine Messenger of the Old Testament. Uh, it's like a four-part series, and in the first part of that series, I discuss at greater length the grammatical issues. So it might help to see that, you know, in writing, so you can pause and reflect on it. Um, and uh, all right.